Tennessee at Home Learning Series for Math. Today's lesson is for all fifth graders out there, but all children are welcome to listen if, they, if they'd like to tune in. This lesson is the fifth in our series. My name is Ms. Williamson and I'm a fifth grade teacher in Tennessee schools. I am so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. Today we will be interpreting fractions as division. If you didn't see our previous lessons, you can find them on www.tn.gov backslash education. You can still tune into today's lesson if you haven't seen any, any of the other lessons, but it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons since we'll be talking about things we learned previously. Before we get started, you will need the student packet for lesson five or pencil, paper, and a surface to write on. I will give you a moment to get those things gathered. All right, let's begin. Welcome back. Today we'll be thinking about fractions in the form of division. You will need to have your paper ready and follow along with me as we learn. Imagine that you have two crackers. On your paper, let's draw two rectangles to represent those crackers. Okay, what if we have two crackers and we want to share them equally between two people? How many crackers will each person get? Jot down your answer. Did you say one? Let's, can you write a division sentence to model what you did? Did you say two crackers, two, divided by two equals one? Let's check. Two crackers, here's one for one person, here's one for another. Each person is getting one. Does it work? Yes, it does. Now imagine this time, instead of two crackers, we only have one. If we have one cracker and we want to split that cracker between two people, how would we share that cracker equally? We would have to split it in half. Each person would get one half of the cracker. Now see if you can write that in the form of a division sentence. So one cracker split among two people says that every person is getting one half. So if I took this part and I gave this to person one, and I gave this part to person two, each person is getting one half of the cracker. We can also think about one cracker be di being divided into halves. Remember we said before that any number over itself equals one. So I could say instead of one cracker, I could say that's the same as having two halves. Do you see them? One half, two halves. When I have two halves and I split them among two people, each person is going to get one half of a cracker. So we could say that two halves divided by two equals one half matching exactly what we did here. Now, look at both of these examples and jot down some things you notice. So you should have the model of the first cracker. We split among two. Each person got one. And we have our second model where one cracker is split among two people. Jot down some things you notice about those examples. Yeah. 
Did you notice that in both examples, we started off with whole numbers? But in the second example, we ended up with a fraction as our answer. The reason we ended up with a fraction as our answer is because we were splitting it into more pieces than the amount of holes we had. We are going to work today on writing division expressions as fractions. For instance, we said that 1 divided by 2 is the same as 1 half. Let's say this time that I have, I have one cracker. Same, same amount of cracker. But instead of sharing with two people, I want to share with three people. What would I do to my cracker? I would need to cut it just like I did here. Since I was splitting with two people, I cut it into how many pieces? Two, since I'm sharing with three people, I would need to cut my cracker into three. That means that every person is receiving one third of the cracker. So I could say that one cracker split or divided into three pieces equals one third. Do you see a relationship between the division sentence and the answer? Even in this instance, remember the fraction 2 over 2 means what? It means 1. Now we're going to switch it up a little bit. This time, let's consider you have two crackers. So I'm going to erase my board and I want you to go ahead on your paper and draw two crackers. If I have two crackers and I want to split those with three people, I want you to think about what's going to happen. How much is each person going to get? originally had shown one cracker split into three pieces, one cracker split among three people, every person is going to get one third. So some of you may have thought of this problem. Well, on our original problem, we cut it into thirds. So if there's one, if there's double the amount of crackers, then each person is going to get double the amount once it's split. Do you agree? And so person one, let's do three circles to show our people. When we split this, this person, person one is going to get a third, a third, and then a third. We could say the same from the other cracker, plus an extra third. So now, since we have double the amount of crackers, so instead of one cracker, we have two, each person's going to get double the amount to themselves. So instead of one third, each person is going to get two thirds. See if you can write two crackers split among three people as a division sentence. Did you write it as two divided by three? If 2 divided by 3 equals 2 thirds. Are you starting to see a pattern? Now some people may have automatically looked at this in the form of thirds instead of holes. So when they look at it in thirds instead of holes, they see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces or 6 thirds. 6 thirds split among three people. Well, six split among three 
Well, there's two for person one, two for person two, and two for person three. To get the answer, two thirds. All right, so now let's think about sharing three crackers equally among two people. I want you to stop for a minute and I want you to think about how that's different than the problems we've done thus far. In fact, let me write them down. So, so far we have written the, we have done, we've done two crackers split among two people. We've done one cracker split among two people. We've done uh, one cracker split among three people. And we've done, uh, what was the last one we did? We did, um, let me look back. We did, oh yes, two crackers split among three people. We got two over two or one, one half, one third, and two thirds. This time I'm asking you this question. What would happen if I took three crackers and split them among two people? Go ahead and draw a model to see what you would get. with three crackers. Remember, I have three crackers and I'm wanting to split them among two people. So like we did before, I'm going to draw a circle to represent us, those people. Some of you may have thought, okay, I'm going to give a whole cracker here and I'm going to give a whole cracker here and then I'm going to split my last cracker in half and each of those people is going to get a half. So three crackers split among two people is going to be one and a half crackers. Can you write a division sentence to match what you did? Did you write three crackers split among two people? Now here is where some of us start to get a little confused because before we got the numbers one over two or one over three or two over three. This time, if I apply that same strategy, I'm going to get three over two. But my model said one and a half. Some of you are probably saying to me, those are equivalent. And yes, you are right, they are equivalent. Remember from one of our previous videos, we said that the denominator represents the number of pieces in the whole. So I can decompose that to two over two is one whole and one half. And so now that is one and a half. Those are equivalent. So does the same pattern work? It does. Now, before we started this problem, I asked you to see if you noticed anything different about the problems. Did you notice that the problems we started with had a, the first number was smaller or e equal to the second number? Whereas in this problem, our first number is bigger than our second number. What happened to the value of the, of the fraction? When I started with a smaller number, I ended up with a fraction smaller than one because I had, I was, I had less pieces than I was sharing with. Whereas in the second situation, I had more, so everybody could at least get one whole. Now let me show you another way. Like before, some people go ahead and think of these in halves instead of taking them and giving them away to a whole cracker. So let's do that down here. I have three crackers and I want to share them with two people. 
So instead of saying, here's a cracker for you, and here's a cracker for you, they say, all right, here's a cracker for you, and here's a cracker for you. And they split the next one, and there's one for you. So we'll say person one, person two. Person one, person two. Do it again, person one, person two. And so now, instead of thinking in whole crackers, we're thinking in halves. So one half, two halves, three halves, which we already discussed, three halves is equivalent to one and a half, or the amount of crackers from our original model. All right, so we concluded from this problem that when my first number is bigger, or that first number is called a, the dividend. When the dividend is larger, then every person is going to get more than one. But when my dividend is smaller than the second number, the divisor, then I'm going to get, they're gonna get less than one. Let's try, let's try another fact, let's try another problem. Let's think about this. You're gonna try this one on your own. I'm gonna give you a few moments. You can model it or you can use what you notice, the patterns you see from what we've done thus far. What would, how much would each person get if five crackers were split among two people? You'll notice that I went ahead and I drew my five crackers. There's a few ways we can do this. We wanted five crackers split among two people. So I'm gonna go over to the side. Five split among two. Five crackers split among two people. This is a little bit different than the other ones we did and I'll see if you can figure it out here in a minute. So some of you may have went ahead and said, okay, here's half for one person, here's half for another. Some of you may have thought about your two people, and these circles are gonna represent my people. I'm gonna give this one to person one, and this one to person two, and one, and two. So, so far, every person has how many crackers? They have two whole crackers. Let's draw those crackers inside of their little circle. Now, what would we do? This is similar to what we did at the beginning. We have one cracker split among two people. So I'm gonna take that cracker and I'm gonna cut it in to two pieces. Every person's going to get one half. So two and a half for person one and two and a half for person two. Now, some of you are thinking, but Miss Williamson, that doesn't follow the pattern we were seeing before. Remember the pattern we were seeing? Five divided by two is five halves. Well, that's because these two numbers, five halves and two and a half are equivalent. So remember when we started this problem, I said some people are gonna wanna go ahead and cut those in halves. If I go ahead and cut them in halves, how many halves make up five crackers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When I have ten halves split among two people, each person is going to get five of those halves. Okay? But what do you notice? That's two halves. That's a whole. And that's two halves. That's another whole. Plus one extra half. So two and a half like we originally ended up with. So what can I conclude about five halves and two and a half? They are equivalent fractions. All right, one more. Are you ready? Mm. This one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but I think you can figure it out. What if I, I'm up in the number of people we're sharing with. So what if I had five, we're gonna have five crackers again, okay? Five crackers 
This time, though, we want to share them with four friends. I want you to solve that problem. Go. So hopefully you recognize that this means five divided by four. If we apply the pattern we've seen so far, we can conclude that my answer is going to be five fourths, or five over four. Now let's model that and see if that works. I'm gonna start by modeling five crackers. If I'm sharing those five crackers with four friends, the options are to give them as many whole crackers as I can first, or I could take the crackers and split them first into fourths. So I think the most efficient way to do it would be to say, okay, here's my four friends. Friend one, two, three, four. I'm gonna take this cracker and give it to this friend, and this one to this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. Take a moment. What do you think we need to do with our last cracker? Yes, we need to split it into fourths. So every person is gonna get how much from that last cracker? They will get one fourth. And so this person is gonna get one and one fourth and one and one fourth, and one and one fourth, and so on. Why does this fraction look different than this fraction? This fraction is written as a mixed number, I'm sorry, this fraction is written as an improper fraction. This fraction is written as a mixed number, but those are equivalent. Today we have practiced interpreting fractions as division. You did a great job. After the video, you will have some problems to work on on your own. Good luck and do your best. If you don't have the student packet, take out a pencil right now and I'm gonna jot down the practice problems for you. Are you ready? The directions are to draw a model to represent each division problem and then the, determine the solution. Your first problem is five divided by five divided by three. Five divided by three. Your second problem is six divided by Four. Boys and girls, I enjoyed doing mathematics with you today. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you in our, our next lesson in the Tennessee at Home Learning Series. Bye. It's me, Coach Wood. Get off your couch. It's time for some PE. I got my toilet paper here. Let's warm up with some little kicks. Nothing crazy. As my niece would say, let's do some yino kicks, Coach. Some yino kicks. Woo! Ah! Nothing crazy. Now let's get a little bigger. A little bigger kicks. You're a little more of a professional. All right? If you need to spread out a little bit, I don't want you kicking your brother and sister. That is the last thing I want. Please do not do that. All right? I'm not condoning that. Nice and easy. Couple more big kicks. One. Last one. I want to see it really nice and I want to see a pose. Ready? Ooh, that felt good. That felt good. Ready? I got my toilet paper right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some little jumps. Just like this. Jump. Turn around. 
jump, turn around. Coach, that's too easy. All right, let's do some poses. Ready? Jump, pose. Oh, beautiful. Ready? Jump, flex. Oh, yeah. Jump, goofy smile. There we go. Here we go. Jump, spider man. Oh, yeah. Peter Parker. Here we go. Ready? Jump, superstar. Here we go. Jump, drummer. Jump, quarterback. All right. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Jump, turn. Ooh, you didn't see that coming. Jump, turn. Oh, oh, oh. I'm throwing you off just a little bit, just a little bit. Here we go. Jump, turn. Be creative. Be creative. Jump. Ready? Jump as high as you can. One more jump. As high as you can. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. Now, this is what I want you to do. You can tell you're breathing. Your heart's racing. You're sweating a little bit. That's what we want. All right? Pick up your toilet paper. Spread your legs out. Toilet paper in your hand. Hands up like this. We're going to do some wacky jacks. All right? So, I'm going to go to the side like this. My elbow's going into my side. All right? And then you kind of just go loose. Go side to side. Just like this. Ready? Woo! Here we go. Start right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo, woo, woo. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome job, everybody. You guys did great. Remember, if you want other PE videos or PE resources, check me out on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash C slash Coach Wood. Peace. <laughs>